everybody, this is the vision. So Sunset Boulevard do certainly have an immortal beginning. A dead body in a swimming pool. Why? Why is he here? Who was the culprit? That is what the rest of this movie is going to answer for us. And boy howdy does it do it well. Now, many times when I do, you know, classical movies from the 50s, 60s and stuff like that, I have a tendency of saying lines like, I wish I loved this movie, but I cannot quite do it because of X, Y, Z. But this time, I am not going to do that at all almost, because boy howdy is Sunset Boulevard, an absolute stone cold classic. This is a bona fide, almost perfect classic. Billy Wilder's second best movie. Yes, I think Double Indemnity is better, but let's find out what this movie is about, shall we? This is Sunset Boulevard. John, played by William Holden, is a pretty unsuccessful writer in Hollywood and he accidentally overhears so another Hollywood producer is berating his work saying that he is a, you know, at best slightly below average screenwriter and destitute and he takes off into his car and then all of a sudden he sees this seemingly abandoned mansion on Sunset Boulevard and he stops by and uh, uh, he meets there uh, Norma Desmond, played by Gloria Swanson, who he discovers was this, you know, enormous screen legend from the silent film era. You used to be big, as says. I'm still big, honey. It's the movies that has got small. She lives alone in this house, basically believing that she's still a big star and that people is, you know, sending her fan mails and that she's going to make her comeback in a while, even though she hates that word. It's not a comeback, it's a return. She has this, you know, script that she's been working on that's going to be her, you know, big return and stuff like that. And he sees it and, you know, realizes that it's a bunch of crap, but he, you know, sucks up to her a little bit and asks if he cannot, you know, be a script doctor and, you know, iron out the wrinkles of the whole thing. And from that moment, a kind of toxic relationship between these two characters starts, where he's sort of trying to wiggle himself into her life. Uh, because I think that his idea is that there might be a story here and I might get inspirations and stuff like that. And, you know, I might, you know, sucker her off for some money and stuff like that. And he soon also discovers that she actually you know, gets fan mail, but he realizes along with everybody else who has a you know functioning set of eyes and a brain that she's never going to make you know a comeback or anything like that she's delusional and completely disconnected from reality because she still believes that she's a big star and that people still loves her and that she's a big part of the industry and stuff like that even though everything around her is basically falling apart and she doesn't really want anybody to, you know, poke hole at the illusion. The only other person who, you know, lives there in the mansion is her weird um, butler uh, called Max. What's his deal with the whole thing? We shall see in a minute. One thing cannot be overstated regarding the movie Sunset Boulevard. Gloria Swanson's performance is absolutely fantastic. I don't know if it is hyperbole of me saying this, but I think that this is one of the top 10, even top five greatest performance I have ever seen because I believe her in every twitch of her head, every weird little, you know, ticks that he has, every little, you know, face that she makes, everything feels genuine because in general it is. Because Gloria Swanson sort of was a, faded silent movie star that actually when you think about it we Billy Wilder uses rather cynically in this movie just to get you know one last big you know good performance out of her uh, in the same way that they kind of uses you know Cecil B. DeMille who really was on the out because time had run away from him and stuff like that in that sense the movie's kind of cruel actually and she's so good and she's so fantastic because at the same time you want her to, you know, make a comeback. You don't want anybody to poke hole at, you know, that she doesn't mean anything to anybody anymore. But at the same time, as she is this tragic character, she's also a 100% witch. A bitter, manipulative and shrewd woman who, you know, really believes in her own lies. And 
it is scary at points. You don't know what she's going to do and the outbursts and everything like that. I was legit frightened of her from time to time. And her quite pathetic attempts at trying to look younger, which ironically enough makes her look even older and more like some kind of an aged monster and stuff like that, really makes her character into something else. William Holden is really good, but you know, you could have replaced him with at least 10 people. I don't think there is a person on the planet in 1950 that could have played this role better than Gloria Swanson. I don't think so. None. Now there are bits and pieces of this movie that doesn't work exactly as good as the rest of it. Because the side plot with John and Betty and, you know, the other script that they are sort of writing on the side of this, I thought took a little bit too much time of better things, you know, with uh, the relationship between Norma and John. And uh, there were bits and pieces of it that could have been cut, could have been trimmed, but it's not anything that dampens my enthusiasm for this movie that much. I said to myself when we had about 10 minutes left of the movie, this movie is almost as good as the hype suggests. And I'm really digging this. I really hope they can end on a high note. And boy, how did they end on a high note. The ending of this movie is so good. It is so fantastic. And when you realize what is about to happen, you go, oh, oh my God, yes! Because the setting, the position of the camera, when you realize what is about to happen, you, you, know, you get goosebumps and then they deliver the final line, the immortal line that everybody knows, that everybody has heard, that you know, I think most people know is from this movie. And then you realize it's what it is about because, you know, just as a line without any context doesn't mean as much as when you see it play out. And those last few minutes, despite probably being made for less money than they use, you know, silver tape on for Shazam Fury of the Gods or something like that, they get so much out of such a small little scene that on you know, the surface isn't anything spectacular, but when you realize what it means and when you realize what is about to happen, you go, oh my God, what a finish. It is one of the best endings to a movie in the entire 1950s. So should you see this movie? Yes. The thing is that this is not a film noir. This is not, you know, like double indemnity or stuff like that. It's not a movie about, you know, gangsters and murder and stuff like that. The murder bit is a very small part of the movie and the identity of the murder victim is sort of, you know, solved in the first minute of the movie. But I'm not going to spoil it anyway because I want you to experience it like I did with completely fresh eyes and not knowing what's going to happen. Because when, you know, things are revealed and when you realize how some things are connected to each other, you go, Oh, I didn't know that we're going to do that. This is an absolute mega classic. And if you haven't seen it, see it. I guarantee you that you will like it. I almost guarantee that you will like it. If you have seen it, rewatch it. You can watch this over and over and over again and you will discover new things every time you see it. Sunset Boulevard is an absolute classic. I wish the pacing could have been just a little bit better, but all the tragedy and all the drama and the weird, amazing atmosphere this movie has, I easily give this movie 91 points, an absolute classic and deserving of its near immortal status. So I'll see you next time for Well So and So Reviewing. Well, such and such. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much.